Hi, my name is Kiara Mohammed. My pronouns are he, him. Um, for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk about my film, The Lies We Lead, and some of the work that I did last year in 2020. So, here it goes. The Lies We Lead came about um, through I was given a commission through the Open Eye Gallery um, in partnership with um, Salford University Art Collection to into looking at COVID and how um, it's affecting our lives and communities. And um, at this point, I was really unwell and. Um, I couldn't, I didn't even go out for the usual walk, so this is like the first lockdown. I didn't even, um, I couldn't get out of bed. I was really unwell and I realized that I spent a lot of time on, um, on, the, on screens. So whether it's laptop, phone, tablet, I was living my life through that, um, like everyone else. And so when I was given this commission, I really wanted to capture the lives of black and brown people um, live, like living through this historical moment. And so I photographed um, my FaceTime and I made friends that way. I just contacted people um, that I knew in real life or knew online that and they were living in the UK. A lot of people started their gardens, like everyone became farmers and bakers and it was such a um, lovely, intense uh, time that we had, that we were just like so busy trying to live our lives knowing that this virus affected us most and and capture, capturing um, the beauty of our lives. That it's always such a privilege um, to be allowed in into people's space um, and for them to share themselves with you. So the lives we lead is is such a collaborative film that um, it was mostly shot on phones, people's phones. Um, and it was people sharing their lives with me. It really captured what was happening the spring and summer of 2020. I just asked, when I asked people to film themselves in their everyday lives, um, I just said capture a moment, whatever it is, whether you're reading a book or gardening, and my friend Mithila filmed herself moments just after giving birth to her beautiful baby and and it was so lovely and such an honor to have that moment despite how difficult 2020 was that there were moments of just joy and love lots of love and that's what was important to me and it still is important to me capturing joy and love is just i just want to do that always whatever work i'm doing that's my main focus the the influences on my film styles are um I write, I write a lot of poetry and so uh, sometimes I write before I have the piece, sometimes I'm not able to write 
before I started editing and sometimes I'm not even able to write until I've finished editing so it's like trying to navigate that and my style of film is very much like my style of writing really lyrical and gentle and moving sort of easing the audience um, through the through the narrative and and I think that's really because of my Somali background and that's how we talk, we're storytellers and so we are guiders of um, the narrative. So creating work during lockdown was um, not too difficult for me. Oh, fireworks. It's like 12.30 p.m. and there's fireworks. Um, like the sun is super bright. I don't know, you can't even see the fireworks, but anyway. Um, do you notice how there's just endless amount of fireworks during uh, this pandemic? Where are they getting it from? What is happening? What is the agenda? It's just constant, incessant, and honestly, I'm over it. Like, I am generally over it. I sound like a grouch. It wasn't too difficult for me to work around the restrictions because I was able to go into my archive, which by the way is now gone. Um, all of my years and years of footage drone footage, camera footage that I've taken and just kept as memories um, of capturing my local area and my family. Um, two of my hard drives have completely wiped out so I've already had like the panic attack and the crap, lots of crying, lots of crying. Now I'm just like, <laughs> it's gone, sayonara, bye. <laughs> What am I gonna do? Um, I can't come and die over this, um, so that's gone. Uh, well, right now I am filming a a um, project called Soft Boys, and it's just about black trans joy and what it means to be a trans man and. Um, how to how I extrapolate myself from toxic masculinity I'm also working on Scouse Republic which I've been working on for 18 months and I generally have filmed the most beautiful that I think piece of work which is now gone it was in the hard drive it's completely gone and um, Scouse Republic is a, I'm gonna have to start again the exhibition is in June I need to have it ready by May and I have to start again um, and every week I go to my therapist and I'm just like uh, I've lost all my work I've lost all my work. <laughs> well, anyway, um, it just means I have to be more creative and Scouts Republic, I think in the end will be exactly what it was meant to be, you know? So, uh, it's about the people of Liverpool and how we continue to thrive despite it all. And that's important. I also wrote a children's story called Halimo. It's based in Somalia. It's a Somali girl who asks nature if she was normal because she recognized this is a queer children's story. She recognized that she was different, and um, and the uh, mosque teacher asks, basically tells her off and she runs away and she 
goes into conversation with nature and asks nature, am I normal? Am I perfect like you? And nature responds back to say, yes, you're normal, you're perfect. And so she concludes that if she's, if nature is perfect and she is part of nature, then she is perfect too. And that story is being illustrated by a trans Somali man and it's, I'm just so excited about this project. And also Soft Boys, everyone involved from making the original soundtrack to um, the script to narration, um, the, they're all uh, either Somali, trans or queer and it's really exciting. Um, and this is so far what I'm doing right now, February 2021.